right, so this is the bare minimum kit that you need to build the tissue box project. So you need a long ruler, chisels. So one's a 15 mm, the other one's a 10 mm. A hammer, a saw, hand paint, Z square, vernier caliper, a hand drill with a 5.5 mm bit for installing magnets. But if you intend to do it without magnets, you can do without this. Set up hole fast to hold your stuff. Sandpaper for sanding, as well as a bunch of scrap wood to help you hold your wood piece with the hole fast. So, on top of this, if you intend to delve more into dovetail joinery, there are a few quality of life like equipment that will make your life easier. So, there'll be things like a this which is a dovetail gauge so it's kind of like a template it makes marking out the shapes of the dovetail much faster then you may want to get a marking gauge so right now we're going to use a vernier caliper as a marking gauge but yeah this will definitely make life easier compared to that yes it, it has the larger surface here to write on the edge. A slightly more accurate square and also socket chisels if you intend to do pretty aggressive angles for your dovetails. So there's a bit of difference between socket chisels and chisels that's in the package. So chisels in package are bench chisels. Not sure you can tell so bench chisels are the ones that have a straighter side walls the so side walls are straight so socket chisels have a angle this allows the socket chisel to reach into more aggressive dovetail angles and that's pretty much it for the 2k so this is the tissue box that you're gonna building the actual one that you're using will have slightly thinner walls which is the one i'm building with this set with you so these have walls of about 15 mm once here at 12. so main visual difference will just be this dovetail pin it'll look like it's quite a bit shorter if you're around here then that's the only difference and of course you'll be slightly lighter so when you unpack your cut list there will be there will be six components so two of these they will be for side short side then these two will be the long side The thicker one here will be top panel. This will be the bottom panel. So six in total. Okay, so now that you have unpacked your cut list, we should start to indicate which will be the inside faces as well as the outside faces. Typically you want to face the nicer surfaces on the outside. The ones with the nicer grain and stuff. Then, if you were to encounter pieces with quite a bit of tail like this, it's okay. it's okay. Pieces like this with quite a bit of tail, you may want to face them on the inside. So, for top and bottom pieces, it's quite straightforward. This will be facing the outside. This will be the inside. Just write like this. When you're using a pencil to mark on a wood piece, do not apply, do not use so much pressure to write, else you damage it. So indicate. So 
this one has to be a tail out here. So we have this piece is on the inside. In, out. So apart from the surfaces, like whether it's nice or not, you also have to check whether it's flat or square. Typically, to make a life easier, you want to make sure that you face the squarest side of the wood on the inside. Because that will be where pieces meet. So you can check for fatness using a set square, the long side of the ruler. Let's go like this, see if it's really straight. So for this piece, this side is pretty damn flat. So the rest here, there's a bit of a gap. So once you indicated the sides and outsides, we will label them. Sequence of ABC. This is one of the ways. So, how do you indicate by the alphabets? Basically, is you have a in the middle of the panel, this why which letter you want to use. Let's say this is A, then this is B, and this is C, and D. A and B, the interfaces are not for A, B, and you just call it A, B, A, B, and B and C, B and C, B and C, C, and because we are not going to use a dovetail bridge to mark out our dovetails, every single dovetail is going to be slightly different by a bit. So, of course, It only your pieces only goes in in one way. Okay, okay dovetail joint. So there's always a tail side of the board, then the pins of the board. This is what you spend most of the effort doing for this project. Before we start, do check and make sure that your boards are of even sizes. Make sure they are square as well. Square on all sides. And of course flat as much as possible. So once that's settled, then we'll go through some of the basics of this dovetail joint I've been doing. Okay, so in this image, so dovetail joint, you're gonna fit at least the short side of it, do the long side of it like this. So this will eventually go to here, but in order to fit, you gotta cut out this thing, has got the tails and the pins. So pins will be this side, tails will be this side. If you want to switch them around, it's fine as well. Just reverse everything in order. So how do you tell why is it called the tails? So just imagine this from a top view. Yeah, tail of a fish or a dovetail. Then pin is pretty much the thing that's sticking out that will go into the hole. So when it comes to doing joinery, it's actually quite straightforward. So long the lines that you mark out are accurate and you cut right to the line and stop there, you should be fine. So problem arises when people overcut. Yeah, so be very conscious of what you do. So in most cases, when you overcut, 
of course the joint the joint will definitely still go in but there will be gaps in there in worst cases the joint may be too loose so there are a few areas to take note of at least for the tails and pins so when it comes to the tail side of things you want to make sure that outside edges which you draw with a pencil later you cut exactly to the line you don't want to overcut so the inside surfaces are typically kind of like so so long the edges are right to where you want it to go you're fine then if you're able to get surface on the inside dead flat of course that will be the best, that will be the highest level they can do else in most cases we will just mildly recess the middle portion so that there is no interference when it comes to fit so here can be mildly concave that's very slightly so if there's any convex or little bit of hump here and there it will interfere with the fit so corners as well all corners they are supposed to fit together they have to be clean very crisp like no gunk in the corners so for pins of course you have a lot of corners make sure all these wood fibers all these are cut cleanly off tails as well the inside corners so the pin side of things pretty much at the outside here it's going to be visible so you want to make sure that you don't overcut at the top here the rest of the surfaces on this side of it is going to be on the inside when it fits together so there's a bit of leeway to that if you would overcut a bit on this side of it we'll still be fine so other critical surfaces will be here make sure you stop right on the edge else when you fit it together you can see a gap through it so joinery be it dovetails or mortise and tenon it's all about discipline and of course wood reading as well wood grain and stuff before we start marking out the dovetails do a quick check for all the boards, you want to make sure that they are all of the same width. In my case here, the long side of my board is quite a bit wider here compared to this. So you see a bit of excess over here. So in such cases, we will align them to either the top side which will be where the lid is or the bottom side I'll pick the bottom side this time around now we can start to mark so I'll show you how to use the vernier caliper as a marking gauge in this case it is of course to find out the thickness of this board by pinching over here there will be alpha then we scribe a line that's along the thickness of this so if you are using a burning caliper just pinch it along the side that's going to be used here so AB and AB pinch here lock down caliper and so continuing from last part now we will scribe a line across with the tips of your vernier caliper so of course the tips has to be kind of like sharp so you'll reference the lower side of the jaws along the edge try to make sure that your caliper is as square to the surface as possible and move in a very consistent manner Cross. Like so. And use a square. 
to check if the line is straight so if you're using this way to mark your lines you have to be very wary of how you tilt the caliper so if you tilt it in either direction away from 90 degrees to a surface you'll get a reading that's a bit smaller than what you wanted so of course another way is to use a square first you just measure out the thickness of the board mark out the position draw a line across so yeah another way to do it if you have a marking gauge it'll be like this so to get the thickness of this board with your marking gauge just place it against a flat surface with the reference face against it lock down that current position that will be the thickness of the board like so then use this reference edge right along the flat surface here to scribe your line so in terms of ease of use of course the marking gauge is better but in order to use this properly you gotta make sure that your stocks are dead square as well now we will start to mark the dovetail okay, now marking of the dovetails have we got the line scribe then just need to mark out center line of wherever you want the dovetails to be at this center line just the ball part for the middle one the other two from the sides if you want you can use the caliper the splash alongside along the edge then just mark out like so same for the other side okay so the reason that I use this edge this face instead of here it is because of this thing, you will not see flush only here then you will be flush so now we have 3 center lines Let's project them down using a set square so in using a set square I going to make sure that this face that is going to reference on the surface is flush you can get your measurements like so just place it along the, the spot where it is at just slide the square towards the point you want to make sure that your pencil is upright for the best results then you just roll through so for areas like such there's not a lot of space for this block to reference on or to rest on you can always flip it around Place a pencil along the line, slide it there and go. You have a marking gauge like so. That will of course be the best. So marking gauges like this, you pretty much just lay it on the right right hand corner, the square corner, and just draw it out, then get the markings. It's like a template. So gauges typically come with a few different taper styles. But in our case, we will not be using this because it's not provided. And also because our chisels are 10mm wide. So if we are doing something that's like a sample box, the sample box was actually done with a slimmer socket chisel. So in our case, we don't have a socket chisel for you. Using a bench chisel, we need to modify the size of the dovetail itself in order to make it easier to cut. So this is the size that we're going for for our dovetails. So once you mark our center line, that'll be this. And then offset from center, we'll offset by 2mm. Lower side, 
along where the line is will offset by 5.5 mm which I've choose just to be consistent just set the caliper to 2 mm so whenever you're using your caliper make sure you get the zero date on to whichever that you want yeah. Okay, get it to lock it then of course use the edge here as a reference let's see so that'll be our 2mm just place it along center line mark out the other one so it's 2 then shift around so it's 2 Then as for the 5.5 to 6 mm, you can just use a usual ruler or the scale of your square. Then just go by 5.5 five or 6 along either side. Line it up. Let's go for 6 for this. Because we are doing manually, there is going to be quite a bit of error. So, the dovetails will go in one way only. So, in order to draw a line properly, let's place it on the spot where whichever start point you want to start at. Slide your ruler or whatever onto the pencil and just walk. so once you're, you're done drawing on this side we will project them to the other face once you're done drawing on this face of it you will project the lines to the end green then do another one on the other side so to project right just use your pencil extend this a little bit to the edge then use your square line against the face and draw so that's how you do this so this time around you already you already have these two points you just need to mark this out and you get it so for the first few times when you do it, you may want to draw on both sides, but once you get a hang of how to saw like properly, there's no real need to draw on the other side. So after you mark out our dovetail drawings, you will want to mark out which side is what you want to retain and which side is waste. So in our case, you can use sticks and crosses. So this side, this is the tailboard. We want here, we want here, we want here, we want here. This side is gonna be gonna be removed. So we just cross it. So, so with regards to with regards to which side of the line to cut, you want to bias your cut towards the waist side of the workpiece. So things like our saw, which we'll use later, it has a certain thickness. So this thickness is what we call the blade curve. So when you saw, you want to place your saw blade along the waist side. So this side will be just nice touching the pencil line and you'll be okay 